I went to a convent school when I was growing up because my parents felt that uh, scholastically it was the best education that could be given to girls. And um, I attended that school. It was a new school. There was no infrastructure uh, for the teaching of science, but I had very motivated teachers. And uh, what they did, and rightly so, is they have demystified science for me. And they could answer all the questions that a curious 10 year old or 11 year old could have uh, with respect to science. And uh, they brought it down to very, very uh, you know, simple example, like you doing science when you're frying an egg, uh, you doing science when you're washing up. Once science has been demystified, I mean, there's plenty of scope uh, to become passionate about it. This is what I did. So I just became passionate about science and I was doing very well academically because of that demystification of the sciences. And uh, when it came to the final uh, decision of going for further studies, uh, my father said to me, you know, what uh, will you uh, do? I said, I want to do study sciences. But I went to see the career guidance officer. And he says, why do you want to do science? Because that's for boys. I mean, you should not be doing that. And um, also when you come back, there will be a job for women scientists because this again, that's the domain of male. And so I went home, my father said to me, what are you going to do? And then now that you have got this advice, I say, I'm sorry, I'm going to follow my heart. And I went and did chemistry. Why chemistry? Because chemistry was the medium through which my answers came from my teachers because they were talking about um, uh, the transformation of proteins, for example, when you fry an egg. You know, all these chemistry questions were answered through everyday life uh, situations. Today, till now, I still remain fascinated with the wonders of science, which can explain so many things. And there's been a series of uh, uh, events that have shaped my uh, progression in the sciences. But there was no uh, ultimate aim in mind. All I was doing is enjoying what I was doing. Women feed Africa. And if women are going to feed Africa, we need to empower her more and more with the technology, with all the legal framework, access to capital, you know, promoting uh, the informal sector where women operate, empower the woman. And she can be empowered through the technology, through, of course, science. And of course, there's so many other areas. If you look at water security, I mean, all these are women issues and it can be done. It can be done through mainstreaming science in our curricula, promoting it, investing, and also investing in the girl child. Why in the girl child? Because we are trying to push many through the pipe. And when we talk about women promotion, women ascent, we are talking about the leaky pipe syndrome. We're talking about the glass ceiling. So if we are going to plug the leaky pipe to ensure that a better outflow is there, when of course we look at the pipe on the other side, we need to have the numbers. There are other issues to address as well, because women are also going to be mothers. So we need to look at the work environment. Women are going to be academic, doing research, and we also have to look at maternity leave and what is the system which is being put in place to make sure that the women will be welcome and no handicap to the fact that she has taken maternity leave or taken time off to look after the family. So as I said, there are structures, there are stereotypes, and these are really putting a break on women as science, be it in the world of science, be it in the world of business, be it everywhere. Thank <laughs> you.